gig review, this time of Necronomidol. Or Necromidal. Necronomidal. I presume is probably the way you say it. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I say it as one. Well, I, I say it Necronomidol because, you know, Necronomicon and. That's obviously where they're from, so. Yeah. But anyway. Um, I thought you were saying Necronomidal there last night, so. Yeah. Presumably that is the way you say it. Oh. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> apologies to the band because I'm terrible at pronouncing things well, quite often. Just ask Ricky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, this is going to be a relatively short review because there is literally just... Just the one artist. Yeah. Doing a relatively short set because they haven't really released that much. Mm. So. But it was a fun set. It was, yes. It was mostly upbeat, mostly all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and a couple of them were more dark and more ambient songs, but very heavy on the kind of fast paced stuff. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> Probably the first time that this one here has ever seen an actual idol group. Yeah. <laughs> Because he doesn't particularly care for idols, because he sucks. There. <laughs> uh, in all seriousness, though, most idol groups tend to just be a bit too hyper for me. That's why when you infuse that kind of thing with metal and synthwave, it's kind of your style. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah. So, where to begin with this show? Uh, on this couch, right now. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. We're both just rebooting at the moment. Yeah, pretty much. Um, Before you were to introduce who the band are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, I was just fucking honest there. Basically, yeah, Necronom Idol are uh, a Japanese horror themed idol group that mostly make metal and synthwave combined with regular uh, idol idolishness. Mm. <laughs> you know, the choreography on stage, lots of dancing and stuff. They yeah. didn't have a live band with them tonight, but they have done recent shows with live bands in Japan, so it's possible eventually they will yeah. have a live band with them. And yeah. they're produced by. I think he's American? He's I, American yeah. I wouldn't like Go to say. Ricky. He basically thought, I really like this kind of music, I'm going to make my own idol group and support them and do what I can with them, and so we did. Yeah. I mean, presumably the li having a live band with them will be when they get a bit bigger around here. Yeah, they're still, still relatively small over in Japan, actually. Most of the venues over there have been tiny. Mm. Like I was saying, they got quite a few of the live videos up on YouTube and stuff that they've done, and they've all been well, not particularly big venues. Yeah. Which I guess is kind of normal for such a, a niche band. Mm. But I'd say, this, I was saying last night that they're served well by having smaller venues because there's a lot more of an intimacy going on. Mm. It doesn't interact more with the crowd, which I think. Yeah. Not for this kind of venue, well, really. this kind of artist. Yeah. yeah. Considering, well, I was almost. You were a f sort of like a line behind me. Yeah, I got moved back slightly just to people moving around and milling about. Yeah. But we were stuck in our place because it was cramped. Yeah. <laughs> but I was sort of. I, from where I was, I was sort of like getting full on eye, eye contact with. Yeah, I think it happened a lot of me as well. Yeah. The equipment was the case the people at the front, you know, could. Well, some of them before I started actually were sitting on the stage. Yeah. So. And they were kind of right to the front of the stage and everything. Yeah. So. And it definitely shows um, very skilled choreographers for being able to work out how they could do a lot of jumping around the stage. Yeah, they're doing a lot of jumps, doing a lot of spins, and just playing out everything and being overly dramatic. It's yeah. And it, kind of a thing. It's sort of like, Jesus, talk about doing a lot with a sm with <laughs> what you've got. Cause, yeah, not much space at all, but a lot going on. Yeah, because um, I, I think the stage 
depth wise it's only about five foot deep. Probably about that actually, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that one guy who did he took a photo with them was just lying down, playing dead on the floor. He took up most of the stage. Yeah. <laughs> He's probably about six foot, so yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's so like six... Uh, six, seven foot deep, yeah. that's it, and probably not much wider. Yeah. So it really was one of those, wow, you definitely know what to do with what you've got. Yeah. Well, they're playing a lot in small venues in Japan, and it's started out probably held and they don't okay we can do this much with this much space it's probably designed more for that kind of venue anyway yeah the kind of band which I reckon would even if they got like really popular probably would still play in a lot of small venues to make it just it works yeah so uh, I I think well it's not uncommon for a lot of bands even when they get big to just play small venues mm. I think a lot of bands generally prefer smaller venues. Like when I went to see Die Krups, um, they were asking, "Why is the way?" I I guess we're proper reviewers now because one of our phones goes off during the review. It just reminded me I have a doctor's appointment tomorrow. It's not even anything useful. <laughs> um, yeah, when I went to see Die Krups. Um, I was asked if I'd be seeing them in London, unfortunately I didn't have the money to go to both shows and um, the guy who asked me said that this was probably a better show because of being able to... Drop the crowd and yeah. uh, be right in the middle of a song. Yeah. <laughs> Which is... I, I much prefer smaller venues like that, it's just got a very nice feel to it. Yeah. There's a lot of bands I've seen being into metal and not J-pop, Neither of them uh, you know, have huge venues most of the time over here, unless you're like Iron Maiden or something. Mm. They end up with you know, Trickham Arena problems. But, um, <laughs> this is terrible. I wouldn't be that able to. Off. Yeah. Actually, that's, that's something that was very impressive, because Tiny... The, we're talking back room of a pub. It's a mm. tiny venue. And the acoustics were... Better than when we went to see Devon Townsend, and it's sort of like... But that was at the House of Apollo, which is a well-known and long-lasting venue. This is a pub, and um, it actually turned really good. Yeah, I mean, the bass could have been toned down ever so yeah, slightly, yeah. but even so, it was one of those, okay, <laughs> how... what? How did the acoustic so clean in this back end of a pub? Yeah. I suppose it might have been due to the fact, at least partly due to the fact it was a playback rather than an actual live like, band performance. Possibly. But even the vocals came across pretty alright with the time. Yeah. So, I don't do, do live vocals, so if that comes across fine, then I assume the acoustics probably are pretty alright. Check the fuck out. Be gone. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of course, this wasn't just first time seeing an idol group for me. This was also first time listening to any of their stuff. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people there last night that I was talking to because we had a chat a lot with them because they were being really friendly. Yeah. Due to probably just the fact the combination of idol fans and metal fans are both really friendly people. And also the <laughs> fact that we kind of didn't have a choice because we were all packed in like sardines. Yeah, when you're you know, showing half your body mass with someone else, then yeah, you're going to have to talk to them. <laughs> Yeah, probably everyone there, a lot of people were saying that they'd only heard of them the last few days or checked them out literally last night or whatever. Yeah. Or some people just went along because, oh, well, there's something going on. Yeah. But there's an old guy that probably, it's like he's in his 60s or 70s even, that came along simply because there was something happening he wanted to take photos. Yeah. This did me enjoying it as well, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was quite funny when, because, um, uh, sorry. Uh, she has this thing of getting the crowd to kneel or sit down yeah. and it's sort of like, ah, okay, this is going to be it's interesting. It's kind of hard to kneel down and do something where everything's stuck together in yeah. the crowd. It's like, this is one mass of people. Yeah, at one point it's sort of like sitting down and sort of, I was being supported by other people sitting <laughs> down. <laughs> I saw the introduction by someone basically about like a, a small guy and how to deal with necromer lives. And it was a case of, yeah, most of the members are probably told you to do stuff, but sorry, she pretty much likes it if you get on the floor for her. Yeah. 
And it does work with sort of the character that she presents. Mm. She's got a very unique character in mm. amongst the band. She's pretty much she's one of the ones, one of the two members has been there since the very start of the project. So along with um, Misaka, who's the other one. But yeah, all five of them put on a good performance. I thought. Yeah. Well, I think you could tell that Hina, Misaka, and Sari probably seem more confident, but that's because they've they're the three that have been there the longest. Mm. So all three of them have been there since. 20, well, 2014, one in 2015. The other two have joined within the last year, I believe. So but those three seem to know exactly what they're doing, get really into it and you know, feel really confident in what they're doing. Yeah. You know, they'd show. But this is why I, well, this is why I like items, you know? I like yeah. you know, seeing these people start out from nothing and you know, mature as they go along and get better at what they do. Mm. It's the benefit of these small idol groups. You know? Usually they start out as amateurs and then, you know, Trial through fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's really the only way to learn. Yeah, I mean, in this case, it's more okay. I think it's the way that the Japanese groups work, and the fact that they usually get pushed to the front and before they even you know, do anything. Mm -hmm. Because if you're new, go perform. Yeah. I mean, a lot of uh, local bands over in the west, it seems more okay. So they'll perform for their friends or in like a local pub or something for quite a while before they actually get you know more attention. Mm. But then the Japanese way of doing it seems to be that they'll get pushed by the promoters before, you know, that period even happens. Yeah. <laughs> They're not really starting from the, the ground up, rather than having you know, a time to get used to things with a bunch of mates down the pub, playing, you know, the back rooms of anywhere local. Mm. But, uh, or not so local in their case. Well, yeah, in this case, it's like, you know, they've only been around three years, um, they're doing a Europe tour, and I was not expecting that. Mm. I suppose it's probably partly because of just Ricky being awesome. I mean, like having a Western producer for this group probably helped them a lot in regards to getting their attention across the, the world. Mm. Um. Battery. Hmm? Battery. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh. Unfortunately, our camera has a battery life of about three seconds. So yeah. yeah. It's the life of an average goldfish. Uh, well, well, we'll just keep going till it runs out and try charging again. Yeah. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, I don't know any of the song's titles. It probably doesn't help that most of the songs are either in Japanese or Latin. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, I mean, you'd be able to say what was the opener and closing. I think we're going to recognize quite a lot of stuff there. Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, I haven't hugely listened to that much of stuff out of the two albums. I mean, I've listened to From Chaos Born their EP quite a few times. Mm -hmm. There's a few B sides here and there that I do not recognize. I and mean, some of the stuff on the first album I haven't listened to that much. Because yeah. I think the second album was considerably better. I enjoyed the first album, but the second one was really good. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I've been following the group since the second single came out. So, I've been around quite a while. I was there back in late 2014. I was like, yep, this band interests me. And they carry on following them. And then they're here now. Mm. I mean, I must say, after like hearing them starting out and seeing some of their earlier lives and stuff, they sounded pretty alright. A little bit rougher on the edges, but what do you expect? But I was actually really impressed with how they performed last night. Yeah. I mean, vocal skills seemed on point, the choreography was good, the interactions with the crowd were decent. It just felt very personal, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I think... <sighs> Despite being a short set, it worked well for being a short set. Hmm. It was very uh, concise. I think. Yeah. They knew what they wanted to do, they put out everything they needed to do, they put out a lot of their most well known stuff. Starting out with Skulls and Stars, which everyone knows because it's been there since pretty much the start, mm. from the first times they released. Um, it's been on pretty much every single release they've had, it seems. Mm. Well, everyone knows except for me, because I <laughs> I literally have heard, had heard nothing <laughs> of theirs before that show. I think I kind of deliberately didn't listen to any of their stuff. Just to see how I might, <laughs> how I might take it. Well, having Dintemblers involved probably helps. Yeah. 
Because no, as you may have seen from our first beta review, we like Intemnus as well. And yeah. Intemnus has written like five of our songs. Mm -hmm. So And they performed like four of them. They performed quite a lot of them, yeah. I mean Skeleton and the Stars is the most well known of theirs and that's one of the Terminus's uh, ones. I didn't actually pick up on the Dan Terminus in that one it's as much. Pretty obvious, I think. Uh, I'll have to give it another listen. Well you have it twice, because it's on both albums, but mm. sorry. But Whatever. <laughs> But yeah, played a lot of stuff. Played most of their single releases. Uh, I played Dead Skills on Stars. Well, not a single release, but you know what I mean. Um, I played Ithaca, which is their most recent single song they released before Deathless. How is that uh, spelled? I T H A Q U A. That's a Cthulhu reference. Well, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't joking when I mentioned things I mentioned, something old gods and whatever. Uh -huh. They have quite a lot of horror influence like that. Law which is Lovecraftian mythos. Yeah. I was wishing song names like Azathoth and stuff like that as well. Jesus. <laughs> about the Lavender Maledictum for an awful for me another one. Mm -hmm. Lavender Maledictum is one of the ones I play as well. Say that slowly. Lavender Maledictum. Which I also finished with uh, one of those I had in there was Hexenlacht as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, all kinds of Latin words I can't pronounce properly. <laughs> well, so, uh, supposedly, according to certain people that we know or knew, whatever, we can't pronounce Latin words properly. Could anyone? Well, that's what's so <laughs> stupid about the claim, because it's sort of like, yeah, we're not going to be able to properly pronounce a dead language. Yeah, there's nobody around that knows what they are supposed to sound like, really. Yeah. You can kind of second guess what they should be saying like, but we don't actually know. Yeah, the closest approximation we have is Italian, and even that's a corruption. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right down to the name. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, generally, overall, damn good set, damn good performance. I was impressed, and I was already a fan of them anyway, yeah. so being impressed is always good. Yeah, and it made a fan out of me. I definitely want to see them again. Uh, okay. Did did say that the, uh, they're planning to come back again in the future. Hopefully it'll just happen. Mm. I would like to see them with a live band because mm. I think that would work really well. And we're getting another battery <laughs> alert so we might as well wrap up. Yeah. Uh, definitely check them out. Obviously you'll be able to check the spelling so it won't be that yeah, much of a got, problem. We've got a lot of their live shows and quite a few videos on YouTube anyway. Yeah. I think a pretty sweet one of Skulls and the Stars, just designing kind of 8-bit retro platforming style while someone did an 8-bit video for them. Mm. Really cool. Uh, um, next review is going to be most... I'm not sure what the next review is, but the one after that is going to be Vast's most recent EP. Mm. So... Check that out. Yeah. Take a look. Um, we'll catch you on the next review. Bye. Bye. You need something